first season of Star Trek Picard is behind us, and to say that the reception was mixed would be sugarcoating it. The ending, though, does leave the question, where does Star Trek go from here, on film and on TV? We shall see. In 2018, then-CEO of the CBS Corporation Les Moonves gave Alex Kurtzman and his production company Secret Hideout a five-year mission, or rather a five-year ironclad contract to lead all things Star Trek for CBS. Since then, however, both Les Moonves and those loyal to him have been ousted. The CBS Corporation and the Viacom Corporation have been merged into Viacom CBS. Netflix has passed on Picard, and the third-party licensees who once made Star Trek the envy of Hollywood have all jumped Kurtzman's proverbial ship. What does that mean for the future of Kurtzman's plans? In this video, we will explore what might have been Alex Kurtzman's original five-year plan, and how much of it might still happen before we address the financial health of the Viacom CBS Corporation itself and how that might influence the proceedings. Whenever we run a story concerning the rumblings we have heard emanating from behind the scenes of Star Trek, we make a point of emphasizing that since the information we relay cannot be independently verified, it should be always considered as a rumor pending further independent confirmation and be taken with a grain of salt. This is no exception, and if anything, you should have even more salt than usual ready this time. This began when we were approached by someone who claimed to have inside knowledge that deviated from our previous reporting. After which, this someone proceeded to tell us what they had been told from their sources was really going on. In other words, we had been presented with a narrative from alleged second-hand or even third-hand anonymous sources that we have no way to vet, that appeared to conflict with what we had heard from our own sources. We ran this information with our own sources, and while they were not able to confirm it to be accurate, they were also not able to conclusively dismiss it as false, at least not in whole. As such, we could be left with a narrative that might not be valid, but that appears plausible enough that it cannot be outright debunked. Alternatively, we could be left with a narrative that is indeed valid, but one which emanates from sources with connections to a different part of the production or even larger organization than our usual sources and who therefore have access to different droplets of information. These nonetheless may describe the same underlying phenomenon, albeit from different points of view. Consider the parable of the blind men and an elephant, where which part of an elephant a blind man comes into contact can influence what he thinks he is dealing with, but is nonetheless the same elephant. Since we could be dealing with a situation like this, we choose to relay the information we were presented with to you. Before discussing how our sources responded to it, and how it all might describe the same proverbial elephant in the room. This someone who reached out to us claims to have heard that things aren't nearly as bad between Kurtzman and Viacom CBS as the rumors we reported on would suggest. On the contrary, he claimed that in December, Viacom CBS took a 49% stake in Secret Hideout to make it an independently but co-owned studio. Kurtzman owns the other 51% and could do whatever he wants using CBS and Viacom resources, including working for other networks and studios. We were then told of Kurtzman's alleged five-year plan. To use a Marvel term, this is his phase one, which would cover the duration of his initial contract and presumably leave the door wide open for an extension. Phase one then consists of five seasons of Star Trek Discovery, which was claimed to have been renewed for season four and five. Short Treks, which was claimed to have been renewed for 12 more. Three seasons of Star Trek Picard, which was claimed to have been renewed for seasons 2 and 3. Furthermore, the in-development, but as of yet unreleased animated series Star Trek Lower Decks and Star Trek Prodigy for Nickelodeon, which was claimed to have been renewed for a second season. And the live-action spin-off series Section 31, Enterprise, and Starfleet Academy, which were all claimed to have gotten season 2 pickups. Which, if Discovery and Picard is anything to go by, would suggest an as-of-yet unannounced international distributor has committed to funding two seasons of each of these. All of this was then claimed to cross over in a mini-series event that will air at the end of 2023, in which even characters from the animated series will appear. As for the Noah Hawley movie, this someone claims to have learned that Kurtzman has agreed to produce it, so it hasn't been blackburned yet, although he did add it was not a priority. So does that mean everything is awesome in the world of Star Trek after all? Not quite. We ran this with our usual sources, and as we said, they could neither confirm nor deny whether or not this really is Kurtzman's five-year roadmap for his iteration of Star Trek, although at surface level it seems exceedingly likely. 
What our sources balked at, however, was the notion that all of the series already released have been renewed for multiple seasons, or in the case of things that haven't started production yet, already picked up for multiple seasons. A roadmap it very well may be, and Kurtzman and Secret Hideout will no doubt fight vigorously for any roadmap of theirs, as they stand to earn from the production fee they are paid either way. But it does not follow from there that either CBS or their shifting international partners will commit to seeing Kurtzman's plan through. Not if they in turn don't profit from Secret Hideout's iteration of Star Trek, which they by all external measures do not. Merchandise always contributed to the financial success of Star Trek before, but for Kurtzman's iteration of Star Trek, for all intents and purposes, there isn't any. Like our sources incidentally claimed, there would not be one year ago. There is also no income to speak of from commercial spots, as this iteration of Star Trek has thus far been exclusive to the soon-to-be-rebranded CBS All Access, which in its current form is something of a flop. The only income of note CBS had from this iteration of Star Trek is from the international distributors, most notably Netflix and Amazon. And everything we have heard suggests that Netflix and Amazon in turn are less than pleased with the kind of viewership that they are getting for the considerable amounts they had to pay and are looking for ways of paying less or seize payments periods. Kurtzman and Secret Hideout can therefore pitch every project they want, just as Bad Robot have been doing in the media for a fourth Star Trek movie and a Tarantino Star Trek movie for several years now. Before it can happen, someone has to be either willing or obligated to foot the bill, which is what has been holding up both the fourth movie and the Tarantino movie for the past four years. Speaking of movies, As we have said for a while now, Paramount are no longer bound to have Bad Robot make Star Trek movies for them, at least not directly at any rate, as the Star Trek production deal between Paramount and Bad Robot has expired. However, this does not mean that Star Trek on film is in the clear. Our understanding is that when the CBS Corporation and Viacom remerged, the production rights to Star Trek on film also fell under the domain of Secret Hideout, due to the fine print of the exclusive five-year production deal Les Moonves gave them on his way out the door. As such, the tipster is in all likelihood right that Alex Kurtzman has agreed to produce the fourth Star Trek movie, which Noah Hawley is still attached to direct for Bad Robot. It should be noted that Viacom CBS weren't the ones who asked him. According to our sources, it was Kurtzman's peers in Bad Robot who did that, because any Star Trek production is now legally required to be made under the Secret Hideout production wing. As for the claim that Viacom CBS has bought 49% of Secret Hideout, we have not been able to verify it so far. If indeed it is accurate, which it very well may be, acquiring such a stake is more likely to be about Viacom CBS increasing their level of control over Secret Hideout, rather than a vote of confidence in Alex Kurtzman. He may still be majority shareholder, however when someone else owns 49% of his company, he no longer reigns supreme. Keep in mind the current management of Viacom CBS never hired Secret Hideout or Alex Kurtzman in the first place, but thanks to Les Moonves, they are now stuck with them for the next three years. Going back to the movies, the deal Les Moonves granted Secret Hideout means that ever since the corporate remerger back in December of 2019, Bad Robot could no longer pitch their Star Trek IV directly to Paramount. The proper chain of command now is to pitch to Secret Hideout, while Secret Hideout in turn forwards the pitch to Viacom CBS. As such, the fourth Star Trek movie, which still has Noah Hawley attached to direct, will technically remain in development for however long Secret Hideout and or Bad Robot decide they want to label it as that. But only the heads of Viacom CBS are in a position to give the green light. The question then becomes, how likely are they to do so? The tipster even said that the movie is quote unquote, not a priority right now. This is an understatement. We have heard from multiple sources, independently of each other, that Sherry Redstone's policy is to hard pass on everything Star Trek related Kurtzman sends her way, lest it already is fully funded and has a sizable profit for Viacom CBS baked into it as well. This is what has held up a fourth Star Trek movie up till this point, and will continue to do so. This is also true for the television side, or rather streaming side of things. Any future seasons of Discovery and Picard, as well as any initial seasons of the not yet in production Section 31, Enterprise, and Starfleet Academy, are also expected to be fully paid for by the international distributor. At this point then, the continued execution of Kurtzman's roadmap, a roadmap Viacom CBS has the ability to change if they indeed acquired 49% of Secret Hideout, is contingent upon Netflix and Amazon footing the production bill in its entirety. Viacom CBS certainly do not want any expenditure on Star Trek at this time.
Viacom CBS was in a precarious financial state even before the virus, of which this platform will not allow us to speak, hit, which sent the world spiraling into a financial depression. The newly merged Viacom CBS ended the fiscal year of 2019 with a debt of $18.7 billion. But they had presented both shareholders and the Department of Justice, who had to approve of the merger between the CBS Corporation and Viacom with an earnings report for 2020 and beyond on how they would pay off their debt and stay financially solvent. On March 27th, this report was rescinded, as it was clear their goals for 2020 could not be met. Worse yet, the Viacom CBS share price has dropped to new levels, forcing them to take on new levels of exposure to stay solvent. In this atmosphere, investors and shareholders will scrutinize every decision the fledgling Viacom CBS makes, and any investment into Star Trek, a previously merchandise-driven franchise currently without merchandising revenue, will be an extremely hard sell. As such, the future of Kurtzman's plans rely heavily on Amazon and Netflix paying the bills. But will they? What we are hearing is they want out. How easy that will be depends on the fine print of the deals between them and Secret Hideout. However, it should be noted that the current pandemic offers everyone a face-saving way out. Alex Kurtzman himself has been already out of the day-to-day -day operations of Star Trek for a year. He still has major input as the head of Secret Hideout, but his creative focus has been on the upcoming Silence of the Lambs spin-off that cannot feature Hannibal Lecter, Clarice. We will keep you up to date as we learn more, so be sure to subscribe and indicate you want notifications on all videos to make sure you don't miss an update. Till then, check out our post-mortem of Picard's first season, an exclusive breakdown of the pilot script for the upcoming Clarice Starling pilot. Also, be sure to let us know your thoughts on all of this in the comments.